Hey fellow explorers, we're back in Tokyo after three years and we're really excited to be here. We're spending 36 hours in this city checking out some of our favorite attractions and we'll be showing you some of the best new attractions in Tokyo. This is also her first time in Tokyo and we've got her dressed up just for the occasion. We are starting this video at Sensoji, the most famous temple in Tokyo. But first we gotta get here from our hotel, the Hyatt Center in Ginza. So let's get back here. First things first, we gotta buy a subway ticket to go where we're going. And uh, it's really hard to figure out how much tickets cost here in Tokyo because the subway maps are really convoluted, but they've got these new stations, these new machines that you can search by tourist spots to figure out where you're going and what you're going. So we wanna go to the Asakusa Temple. So you can just click these different things where you wanna go, click that, and it'll give us this big map. What it tells us is that we're starting here at Ginza and we're going to Asakusa G19. We go ahead and enter the number of passengers. We have two adults with us and we will go ahead and insert our money. It takes bills and coins. Here we go, we'll put the bill in there. And we get our change and two tickets. All right, popping up from the subway, we are back, and uh, this is really just, we come to this temple, like, seems like moth to a flame every time we come to Tokyo because it's just so, it's so iconic, like, this is where you want to get your selfie. This is the main shrine, just back that way. The main gate everybody takes a picture of is, like, right on the street, and there's this really long promenade that has a whole bunch of shops and touristy things, which is where we picked up her red yukata. 3,500 yen, perfect for her to wear around. You can rent them if you're adults, um, but for her, since it's so small, it was cheap enough just to buy one. And if you're looking for a unique Western Japanese souvenir, stop into the Starbucks right by that gate. They've got some really cute Starbucks bears dressed up in traditional Japanese attire. One of the many things that makes this temple so interesting is it's very Japanese and un-Japanese at the same time. So from a look, it is definitely one of the most Japanese looking places in Tokyo with all the modern buildings around it. You see Tokyo Sky Tree off in the distance, but all of the people here are tourists. You know, everybody wearing a kimono, they are not Japanese. They are all people visiting Japan that are out here. And so if you're looking at the masks, I'm recording this in April 2023. Most of the visitors to Tokyo don't wear masks, but most of the people in Japan, 98% of them still are wearing masks 98% of the time, inside or outside. One of the main things to do at this temple is to find out your fortune, and you make an offering with a hundred yen into the slot right here, and you take this thing right here. Princess, shake this. And then dump it out. Okay, and then we dump it out. Here you do it, hold it, dump it out, and we're gonna dump it till we get a stick that comes out. And on this stick is a number, and that number is nine, because I can read Japanese. And so we look for this number up on here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Kitchen and I actually can read a few of these characters. I can match them at least. And then we open this up and, oh there's two. We open this up and we take one fortune, we close it up. Oh, it's, it's a good yeah. fortune. Well yeah right, so it's written in Japanese, but OC Girl says this is the good fortune. And here it's written in English and it tells us this is the best fortune. If you try to be famous, princess, it will come out as you hope. Your wishes will be realized. A sick person recover. The lost article will be found. Hey, 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 hey. This isn't your fortune. You don't get second choices on fortunes. There's only one. We got the good fortune for the princess, and we take this home with us. If you get a bad fortune, which we didn't, I want to show you over here. There's a place that you can tie your bad fortunes right onto here, uh, so it stays here at the temple good fortunes you take home with you. So if you see people tying their fortunes at the temple, that was a bad fortune. They don't want it anymore. Well, now that we've got a really good fortune, we're not gonna take any more chances here at the temple, keep our fortunes high. We're gonna head over to the Sky Tree, the tallest building in Tokyo. I got a whole video of that if you wanna see what that observatory looks like. But we're gonna walk along this new walkway that was built to get there. All right.
as we were walking towards the sky tree, I ran into some fellow explorers from Seattle as I was checking out this strawberry drink and snack shop because strawberries are really popular in Japan uh, and they just had some. So what did you have and how was it? Um, we had like these strawberry things and they're pretty much like strawberries and mochis and they're like really good and they have quite a few food. All right, well they sold us. Here's the strawberry smoothie, 750 yen. Mmm. Ooh, it really does taste like drinking a strawberry. And I think they love the strawberries here because the strawberries in Japan are so much sweeter than they are in most places in the world. And so, you know, find the strawberry desserts in these places. But also when you go to the supermarket, check out the strawberries from there. And if you want to have some of the delightful ones, you can get pink strawberries and even white strawberries. So in addition to the smoothie, we also got one of these strawberry desserts. Our fellow explorers sold us on the pistachio one. They were sold out. So we got the raspberry mochi with strawberry. Mm. This is a really interesting combination of, you know what a strawberry tastes like, but then this kind of mushy, spongy, chewy thing that's the raspberry mochi. This is 350 yen. I think it's a good combination while you're here. It's just about a 10 minute walk from that temple. We are here at the Sumida River Walk. It is right under the train tracks of the Tohoku Sky Train Line, which is passing us right now. You can see the Asagi Beer Building, that gold one that looks like a beer mug. And because it's right under the train line, it's actually really kind of neatly set. They love to reuse their train tracks in this way. Riverwalk, as it turns out, is much more than just that bridge, actually. It's the whole area underneath the Tobu Sky Tree line to the Sky Tree. I think they've sort of said, like, hey, if we can connect the two biggest tourist attractions in Tokyo with a public promenade and a whole bunch of shops, we're just gonna we're just gonna rake in the dough. We're gonna rake in the dough. But it's one of these neat like Tokyo public private spaces. I feel like some of the best things in the city are definitely privately owned spaces that you can just kind of walk upon and enjoy. So you know it's private because it's only open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. We made it to the Tokyo Sky Tree and they have a lot of restaurants in here. We stopped from the food court because it's easy and quick. What picked our eye? Yakiniku Champion for Japanese barbecue. This is Japanese A5 Wagyu B. 2,000 yen for this rice bowl. Let's go ahead and dive into this. Oh, wow. That is so tender. Mm. A little bit of rice. Kimchi, some pickled veggies on the side. This is tremendously delicious. This food court has a lot of other great things, ramen, takoyaki, and even an ice cream shop that specializes in ice cream with banana on it. After lunch, we went and explored the shopping center and like all the stores near are super cool. You could easily spend a half day or a whole day just in the shopping center inside the Tokyo Sky Tree. But in the Disney store here, and by the way, it's better than Disney stores in the US or other places, they sell a traditional Japanese kids backpack called the Disney 5 leather made in Japan. This backpack costs 70,000 yen for about 550 US dollars for the kids backpack. I don't know that our princess is ever gonna have a backpack that expensive. And you have to reserve it ahead of time because they're like such a What did you buy? I want to show it to the camera. Yeah, we got an elephant right there. And the stuffed animal, uh, really in Japan, are so much cuter than the stuffed animals in the world. Even in the Disney shops, it's different merchandise here in Japan than it has other Disney stores. I think we found a winner. Okay, on every trip to Japan, we bring back some Disney stuffed animal. And OC Girl loves the Winnie the Pooh from the Disney shops here so much that we actually brought back three Winnie the Pooh's from Japan. But my favorite store in the whole place is Danso Sample. It's on the fourth floor of the East Yard, and this place just specializes in the fake Japanese food, or should I say replica food, that you see in the windows of all the shops. I bring back something from this store every time I come to Tokyo. So before heading out of the Tokyo Sky Tree, we wanted to get some snacks before we're on the road and in the food court at the Tokyo Okope stand, uh, we got a mini strawberry parfait for the little one. OC Girl got a Cafe Ole float and I got the strawberry mold clonk 
are the fancy looking big spoons and yeah, <laughs> you got little spoons with this one and <laughs> this cheese. It's cheese and strawberry together with ice cream. Oh, there it is. Well, after that delicious dessert, we took the subway about 30 minutes to one of our favorite neighborhoods in Tokyo, Shibuya. So we just took the subway over to Shibuya Station. We had a good nap on our ride, and now we got all this stuff and we don't want to carry it with us. So we're going to use some of Japan's amazing coin lockers that we walked around Shibuya Station for 15 minutes to find, because the station's under construction. But you can just, uh, you say, put in your baggage, and then we go over here, we find an empty locker. This one's empty, so we'll put it in here, and then we close the locker, and then we push this down that says lock, and now we come over here, you select the locker, that's our stuff, and then we say use IC card as a key, and then we tap the IC card right there, and this is what we'll use to unlock the locker. When we come back, high tech. Something that's not new, but something we just always enjoy is visiting the Shibuya Scramble Crossing. This is the most famous intersection in Japan because thousands of people cross here every few minutes. You can cross in every which direction and it's a total party to go across the intersection. And one of the classic selfies to take in Tokyo is to take a selfie at this intersection. Just make sure you don't get caught in the middle of the intersection when the lights turn red because the cars definitely won't stop for you. Now we didn't visit it this time because we visited on our last trip to Tokyo. There's a really neat observatory here called Shibuya Sky. I've got a whole video on that, but if you want to do it, make sure to make a reservation ahead of time. And really in front of Shibuya Station is like the biggest collection of characters. This guy up here is Kim Jong-un with his nuclear missiles. Don't you know Japan is usually a pretty quiet place. Shibuya is not one of those places. What you hear behind me is like an advertisement for a death metal band that just drives by. Some might call it art. Others might call it noise pollution. Sorry if you're fans of that band. Now something that is new in Shibuya that we thought was really cool are these digital advertising screens. No, not because they run ads, but because every hour these screens, which you can see just behind the train tracks, have Hachiko, the famous dog from Shibuya, and he comes up to basically ring in the hour on the hour, so that's pretty cool. Now just behind those train tracks in the direction of those digital screens is Miyashita Park, and uh, while the park isn't new because there's always been a park here along the Yamanote line. Uh, the park has now been elevated about three floors and a shopping mall built underneath it. Shopping mall, we'll get to that in a moment. But the park itself is pretty awesome. You get some neat views of Shibuya up here. And there's a new hotel in this complex too called the Sequence Hotel if you're looking to stay someplace new and fresh. Oh, and from up here, it was also interesting to see Tower Records, the long defunct American brand, is apparently still alive and well here in Japan. There's a sand pit, there's clean bathrooms, there's artwork, and then there's a whole bunch of shops and restaurants to eat down below. And if you're craving American food, just down one level from the park, you'll find their food hall with outposts of Taco Bell, Panda Express, and McDonald's. Oh, and this Maguro Market also was advertising Hawaiian-style poke bowls. But probably the most interesting spot of all in this building is actually the ground floor. This is a new building, but they've made it look like an old-timey building. They call it the Yokocho, or an eating alley. There's like 20 different food vendors in here. Just walk through and find the one that looks tastiest to you. Some of Tokyo's best restaurants are in the basement, and this one's no exception. This is a soup curry restaurant that specializes in soup curry from Hokkaido, the northern part of Japan, in basement level one here in Shibuya. Uh, this is the soup curry, um, comes with a lot of different topics. This is their special one, so it's got like meat and chicken and hot dogs and eggs. Comes with some rice on the side, and you can add cheese on top of the rice if you want to. When we were in Hokkaido, we had soup curry, just loved it, couldn't find it anywhere in the U.S. And so when we're back in Japan, we must have this dish. To get back to the hotel for us, it's just the Tokyo subway Ginza line right to Ginza. But this Ginza line is also in a new station here. And it reminds me a lot of the new World Trade Center station in New York City, this kind of white undulating structure. 
quite nice in here and also neat views of Shibuya out through the windows. Odd, the subway is up on the third floor. And of course, I also love this line because of the yellow train. Now we really have All right, we're back in the hotel for the night. We are staying at the Hyatt-centric Ginza Hotel that, I don't know, it's a very like weird motif of a Hyatt. I like the yellow wall for sure, two twin beds. Um, but one of the most interesting things in this room is this like center console here. So we just went from the bedroom to the bathroom. And if you wonder where the sink is, there's this little thing that comes up and actually opens up to reveal the sink right there. And if you wonder, well, so there's a shower and a bathtub that's over here and the toilet's over here, but then you're like, how do you close this off from the rest of the room? Well, it turns out that there's actually a wall right here that you can close off this whole thing from the whole room. <laughs> help you, help you. Yeah, definitely one of the most unique rooms that I've been in. We were here uh, just before the country closed down for COVID and I came back because of the yellow Kleenex box. It's destiny. One of our traditions whenever we're in Tokyo is to overindulge in Japanese sweets and desserts at Japanese department stores. And this one is perfect. Actually, many of them have dessert floors, basement level two, all desserts. What do we got in this bag? I'll show you when we get back to the hotel. Now, these are the elaborate pastries. We've got a Mont Blanc wrapped in this little protective thing. We've got a strawberry pie. We've got a strawberry shortcake. We've got a strawberry roll. And in here, they even put a little bit of ice to make sure it stays cold for the trip back home or to the hotel. How is it? Good. I tasted. Good. Got a frosting on mm -hmm. top. Well, good morning. It's our final morning for this trip to Japan and our final morning in Tokyo. We're going to explore this morning around Ginza, which is Tokyo's high-end shopping district, just two blocks from our hotel. I don't know that we can afford much of this, so we'll probably be doing mostly window shopping and lunch eating. You know, but it turns out Ginza is actually a lot more than just shopping. There's a lot of attractions hidden in these department stores to bring people in to shop. This is the Art Aquarium Museum on the ninth floor of the Mitsukoshi department store. Actually, it's on the eighth floor, but you buy tickets on the ninth floor. Anyway, it's all these different goldfish and all these really interesting aquariums. There's got to be like 10,000 plus goldfish in this place. Hello. But you know, this place has a whole vibe, like it's dark and there's this really moody music and the cherry blossoms you saw, that was like themed just here for April. I mean, it feels very different than going into any aquarium I've ever been to. Uh, admission to this is 2,400 yen. You get a 100 yen discount if you buy it online and kids under 12 are free. And uh, right now we've got the princess on the mission of counting exactly how many fish are in this aquarium. So she'll report back to you on that later. 10,000, look at these white fishes. I think one of the things that's really amazing here is just how clear all of the aquariums are. You know, many aquariums you go to and you can't really see the fish because things are scratched up and cloudy. But here, this glass is clear as really nothing. I could see the fish as if they were swimming here in the air. And like any good tourist attraction in Japan, it's got a gift shop at the end that you can pick up some memorable items to bring home, including really big goldfish stuffed animals. And I actually think this part of the museum was our daughter's favorite. So for our final lunch in Tokyo, we're on the 11th floor of the Mitsukoshi department store at Anzu that specializes in katsu. Where's the katsu? Well, first they bring out uh, some salad and some sauces and some sesame seeds here that you take this stick in this bowl that's kind of mm, has like grated rough edges to mix it up and then you put in the sauce after you mix this up and then you dip your katsu into it so once my katsu is here and 20 minutes later when i'm done mixing this sauce i'll see you in a second katsu is here i got the katsu pork katsu with curry um the princess, she has a little kid set that's in like a Mickey Mouse plate, which is pretty neat. OC Girl has the premium katsu, the fatty loin 
um, which is really quite delicious. How do I know that having not eaten it? I ate it last time we were here three years ago. This place is pretty good. So if you're in Ginza looking for some decent food, uh, check this place out. We've been here for a second time, so you know how good it is. Oh, and if you're a fan of Uniqlo, definitely check out their 12th floor flagship Uniqlo where they've got like shirts that are going back and forth and umbrellas that are spinning and clocks made out of socks. It's a really neat store. So we got back to the hotel lobby to check out. Princess wanted to sit on the rocking chair, but what's pretty funny, they have this little area, which I thought was a place to like, maybe bring your dogs if you're staying at the hotel. But this is an area for the off-leash Aibo only. This is the Japanese robotic dog. And at this hotel, he has his own little free roaming area. Aibo even has his own Hyatt centric little house to go into. Well, no meal is complete without a good dessert. And so for dessert, we headed over to Ginza 6 on the fourth floor to Nakamura Tokichi. This place specializes in matcha parfaits. This is like the most expensive parfait I've ever had. It is 1,600 yen. And this isn't even the most expensive parfait they sell here. It, like, it's significantly more, like twice the price of this one, almost. Um, but this place is neat. They serve you a welcome tea set when you sit down and give you water and the tea bags and a teapot and like even uh, English instructions on how to brew it. And it comes with a long spoon. So let's dive into this. You get all these different layers in the parfait. And even a raspberry right there. It's good. This whipped cream, I know it's not the matcha, but the whipped cream even is to die for as opposed to what random supermarkets put on their cupcakes. And we just checked in our bags here at Haneda Airport. We got a couple hours to kill and we found out they've got a whole new area called the Haneda Airport Garden, which it turns out this has no garden. It is a shopping mall and two hotels, but now there are three hotels in Haneda Airport. So if you've got a late flight, check out the Villa Fontaine hotels that are in here. It has like 1,500 rooms. There's also a whole bunch more restaurants and shops to explore in the Haneda Airport garden. Well, fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy some of our other vlogs from this trip to Japan. We visited Atami, the Ito Peninsula, and the Fuji Five Lakes region. You'll find links to those on the screen. Or if you're curious more about the Hyatt Centric and you want to see my whole hotel review on that, you'll find the link here for that too. All right, fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of these videos.